Hi, okay, we're back. Uh, this is Joe Rabel. I wanted to uh, spend a few minutes and uh, give you a better description of the pinch ply uh, that I describe in my book. Um, the whole idea behind this, uh, this type of pattern is what we're trying to do is, is find where the momentum is in a specific direction and we get a counter move to that direction. Uh, it's, it's basically, you know, a pullback within a trend, but I'm using the momentum indicator to kind of tell me that we've got a decent trend in place and the trend is fairly smooth. Um, and then I use price action to help me define it. So let me just, uh, let's get right in here. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I want to show, um, there's, there's actually a couple different forms of this pattern. One takes place inside of a range or if you're trying to turn the trend around, like if you've broken a trend line and you've come back to test support, in many cases, you'll get this pinch play developing on that pullback. And then if you see that, you can really jump the gun and not wait for three, not wait for the breakout um, in order to get in. But in this case, I'm just going to show a real clean trending move. Um, stock uh, KB Homes here breaks out on a daily chart. You get a pretty decent move. And uh, we get some separation, if you notice, with the, the MACD line. The blue line is the MACD. The red line is the moving average of the blue line. Um, and so it, it, what, what happens is if you get a decent sized uh, impulsive type of a rally uh, in price, in many cases, you're going to get a little bit of a sep you know decent amount of separation between these two lines, and and then what it allows you to do is look for a pullback uh, for a low risk entry because we know that the red line is telling us what the trend is. The trend of the moment, the momentum trend is strong and it's rising, and so we're looking for pullbacks or pinches in the blue line back towards this line, uh, towards the red line as an entry point. Um, what I'm looking for in terms of price is I want to see two lower highs. That's how I qualify it. It, it. it can be three lower highs. It could be four and sometimes five. In most cases, you're going to see two to three. Um, and, you know, you have to have a pretty strong move to the upside for a pullback of two to three bars to be able to hold the MACD line to hold its signal line. So it's... Uh, it's it sort of in itself, it's, it shows that if you can hold on a pinch that you had a strong enough impulsive move to the upside uh, prior to that. And that's really what I'm looking for, because impulsive moves tend to lead after a pullback, tend to lead to new highs. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see um, this pullback started here. We made a lower high and then this actually was a little higher high. It gapped up above this bar and then pulled back. So this this pullback did not really qualify. Um, even though we started to get a minor sign of a pinch here. Um, but then if you notice, after this bar up, it had one bar down as a lower high and then another bar, lower high. And notice how small these bars are, these little narrow range bars. Those are very high quality setup bars because you don't have to take a lot of risk in this type of trade when they set up this way. Um, and if you notice, since this is spent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars working sideways, back towards its 18 MA. Look at what happened here with the blue line. The MACD has actually sort of pinched back down towards the red line, which is rising and it's holding it. And my trigger is taking out the prior bars high. So once I get two lower highs, if I take out this bar um, to the upside by a couple pennies, I wanna get long. And then I'm gonna use a stop underneath this low um, if you wanted to be more conservative with it, you could use that bottom. Uh, but in most cases, I'm looking for kind of immediate movement afterwards. Um, and a lot of these trades, if you get them uh, in my book, I talk about the two time frame pinch play. If you have it in two time, two consecutive time frames, you can definitely go for a target of three to one. Um, those those happen on a regular basis. If you have a really tiny bar, you can go for a three to one target as well. Um, but this is the basic look of the pattern. I want to see a, a trending move. I want the red line to either be rising or falling. And then I want to see the blue line kind of working counter to it. Now, 
I want to point something out. There's a couple of things I want to point out later in the move. So we make a, a pretty nice rally off here that would have certainly gone and hit some targets. Um, but then notice what happens. We get another lower high, lower high, lower high. I got three lower highs here. Now, this is a pretty minor pinch. And in some cases, especially when a trend is just starting, you actually won't see a real definitive move of the blue line back to the red. It, it'll be very subtle. Um, they'll be moving back together, but it won't be like a pinch uh, where it looks kind of like a duck bill. You won't have that. Um, you'll, you'll have more of the just lines maybe moving, you know, tightening. Um, I still take those trades. I would, I would recommend out of a breakout situation, this is the first, um, uh, anti, I mean, the first, uh, pinch play coming out of a breakout pattern. I would take the first two that come out of the breakout because essentially what you're doing with this pinch play is trying to buy the first two uh, bull flags. This I would consider to be a bull flag. This is a bull flag. And you're trying to hop on these with low risk and look for continuation right away. I would play these patterns for definitive targets if you're just playing them by themselves. Um, if you have like a bigger reason, you have a, a longer term trend developing um, using the longer term two time frame pattern and you want to play it for a big move, this is an excellent way to get in with really low risk. Um, but in this case, I'm looking for this specific pattern, the first two. And then after that, I think you you start to take a little bit more risk taking them beyond the first two. Um, uh, but again, this is the same pattern, even though it didn't work its way back to the 18. And even though after you got in the blue line crossed down below, I would stick with this trade. I would use my stop down here and I would be going for a two or three to one target, depending on how big the the, the risk was. Um, and then I want to point out one other thing. So let's go to the very beginning of this chart uh, or this move and <clears throat> stock moves up or at least the MACD crosses back above the zero line. That's this flat line here. That's zero. And then you work down and hold the zero. So I, I have a pattern I call a zero line reversal. Um, and, you know, a lot of them are you're just looking for the, the first time you cross back above the zero line and then pull back and hold it. Uh, the problem with this entry is by the time the signal line, uh, the, the MACD crosses above the signal line, you've made a pretty significant move in a lot of cases in price. You've, you've already really moved off the lows. And I don't really want to buy four or five days up or, or up here on a gap at 27 and change when, when the stock's already moved up from 25 over the last four or five days. So in those cases, I will typically wait for a pinch to develop. And if you noticed, um, you had the crossover and then you had one lower high, two lower highs, three lower highs. And look at what happened. Even though this is a real subtle pinch, you really did pinch here. I mean, it crossed over and held and, and held during the pullback. This qualifies as a pinch play. Um, it isn't. I don't think it's as high quality as the breakout patterns or the ones where you've broken the downtrend line and it's kind of number two in a change in trend. I think those are the highest quality because you've got price and the moving averages kind of supporting the, the move. Uh, but in this case, I like this trade because it's coming off the zero line and there's a very good chance that, you know, you, you could be starting a new move. So um, that is the third type of way that I would look at uh, entering using this um, this pinch pot pattern. I describe this in my book. I recommend you subscribing to the channel, my channel here, because I'm going to be going over. I use this example a lot of times. Um, you can see in other videos where I mention it. Uh, but I, I just wanted to spend a few minutes to make sure I, I looked at it in detail for you.